Okay, so we're going to talk about metals next in terms of their composition. So what is a metal and why is this important for manufacturing? Now the structure of metals is a crystal structure and it's generally depicted as this uh, cube format with atoms or ions uh, making up the edges or the corners of the cube. Sometimes uh, there is a atom in the middle that would be a body center cubic atom or they're on the faces of the cube and they are face centered cubic. So if they're on the face uh, you fit more atoms in than the body. Uh, so the, the, how they line up uh, is going to affect their mechanical properties. They're very tightly bound together because free electrons hold the positive metal ions together. Because they're very tightly bound, it takes an awful lot of energy uh, to melt them. They have high melting points, they have high boiling points. They're good conductors of heat and electricity, again, because they're, they're tightly packed. And they're malleable and they're ductile, which means that they can be worked. Um, they have a, a good ability to um, uh, yield under tensile strength and be worked into a different shape or form. And they're lustrous, which means they're, they're, they're shiny, which we know. We'll have a look at the atom packing now. So if you can imagine an invisible cube, but here it, it's quite visible. And at each corner of the cube, you've got eight atoms. Um, and these are, um, are, are packed as such. And when these atoms start to, to pile up to each, next to each other in this regular matter, manner, uh, you get um, the structure of metal, this tightly uh, formed structure of metal that we talked about. How the atoms uh, pack in on this cube determines whether it's a face-centered cubic metal, a body-centered cubic metal, or a hexagonal close packed. Um, and, and this defines the, the mechanical properties of the metal, whether it's FCC, BCC, or hexagonal close packed. I won't go into any more detail than that uh, because it, I'm not doing a course on metal structure but there there's plenty of information available on this but this will define uh, the mechanical properties of now when you do start to get these atoms or ions uh, packing in on top of each other you get the growth of crystals and what I'm circling here is the growth of crystal in one direction you can see the neatly ordered fashion and over here we have the growth of another crystal. It's a neatly ordered fashion. And here, and here, and here. So you can make them out. Uh, and when these crystals grow into each other, um, they're called grains. So each of these items that I've circled is now called a grain. And between the grains, you have a grain boundary. And if there's a dislocation, meaning there's something amiss in the structure of this crystal here in the minute, there's an atom missing or there's an atom too many or an ion too many, um, this is a point of stress in the metal and it could cause the metal to fail, uh, to, to, to shatter, for example. Um, and the more grain boundary you have, the more catastrophic this is going to be. Uh, so over here is a, a micrograph of a metal that's been polished and you can see these ground, grain boundaries under a microscope and sometimes even to the naked eye. So these are the grain boundaries that are, are depicted by the yellow, uh, by the green uh, dots over on the other side. Uh, so you can see them and the more grain boundary there is, the more chance there is for the metal to catastrophically fail in that it would shatter uh, under a weight for example. So in medical devices uh, that you would like stents and prostheses which we've talked about where it's absolutely critical to keep the mechanical integrity of the metal then a smaller grain size is preferred. So if you have smaller grains then you have less grain boundary. Uh, so smaller grains are preferred. 
Um, generally, this is achieved through heat treatment, which is controlled heating and cooling used to bring about a desired change in the physical properties of the metal. It improves the structural and physical properties for some particular use or for future work. So as I said, in medical devices, it's particularly important that the appropriate heat treatment method is used uh, for metals. And uh, there's different types of heat treatment. Uh, they could be referred to as hardening, case hardening, annealing, normalizing, tempering, uh, amongst others, rolling, uh, but all of them involve three basic steps, and these are heating, soaking, and cooling. So heating, many alloys change their structure when they're heated to specific uh, temperatures. So therefore, by heating to a specific temperature, you're uh, hoping to get the structure that is desirable. Once the metal part has been heated to the temperature at which the desired change in the structure takes place, it must remain at that temperature until the entire part has been evenly heated, and this is called soaking. And then the metals are cooled. So the metals are cooled to conform to specific structures again, and this increases their hardness, their toughness, their ductility, and their tensile strength. And the manner in which they're cooled is particularly important. So they could be cooled slowly, or rapidly. Uh, they could be quenched in, in cold water or oil or brine. Um, and all of these methods of cooling will have an effect on the grain structure and, and the, ultimately the structure of the metal. As I said, the grain size is important. Rapid quenching of steel results in a fine grain structure with small, little grain boundary and therefore is tougher and less likely to yield. Slow cooling or quenching from a higher temperature yields a coarse grain structure. Coarse grain steels are less tough and they have a greater tendency for distortion than those having a fine grain. A fine grain steel, in addition to being tougher, is more ductile and have less tendency to distort or crack during heat treatment. Let's look again at which metals are uh, used in medical devices. Orthopedic applications, we're using stainless steels, cobalt chromium alloys, titanium alloys. Dental applications, amalgam, gold, platinum. Uh, and other applications, nitinol are used in self-expanding devices uh, such as stents. Uh, coronary applications, uh, stainless steel, cobalt chromium alloys, platinum chromium alloys, and nitinol again. So hopefully at this point you'll be familiar with all of these terms and a little bit about the structure of metals. So I've given the most basic overview of metal structure. There could be uh, two or three modules on the subject. So I would refer you to other texts and, and other websites uh, to get that knowledge if you desire it. Uh, but for the purpose of this MOOC, I won't go any further into the structure of metals, uh, just in terms of uh, we'll pick it up again later in how they're manufactured. So thank you.